Well, my friends, today our vlog takes place here. Sony Pictures. We're taking a Sony Pictures tour. My friend Keith Coogan's going to give it to us. He loves, that's one of the odd jobs he does when he's not auditioning or acting. He loves film history and he loves giving tours here. He said it's a passion of his and said I should come take it. Oh yeah, writer's strike. This should be a lot of fun. I've never taken the tour here. I've worked on this lot before, so I've been in some of the studios and everything, but he did warn me I can't film the whole thing. I can film like the cars and the props and some of that stuff. But since it's an operating studio, they don't want people just taking random photos of celebrities walking by working and stuff. So hope you guys understand. It'll be a great video though, I promise. Awesome, I'm official. So I was told when we started the tour that I could take photos outside pretty much anywhere, just not inside the buildings on the sound stages unless they told us we could. So we started walking through the studios. They were showing us this was the scenic arts building that's being built that will house the new backdrop section. So this is also the Jimmy Stewart building. A lot of the buildings are named after famous actors that were big here. And we went in there and saw this amazing mural on the history of the films that have been produced there. And we watched a movie on them. Now we started walking through and they were explaining how all the hair and makeup and everything is done in these trailers. Actors stay in these trailers when they're not filming and a lot is done over in these trailers. So we started walking over to Soundstage 30, which was cool. It's the Esther Williams Soundstage. So they had a big giant tank in there. They used to film all the water scenes and I had read that she had busted her eardrum several times swimming in there. It was uh, also where they built the bat cave in that tank and uh, filmed Castaway in that tank as well. Yeah, they um, apparently can drain the water out anytime and that's how they built the back cave and then put the green glowing light in there. Keith showed us this is one of the only MGM manholes remaining on the property. Then we got really excited because we went into Soundstage 27, which is, that was Gene Kelly's favorite soundstage. They did some of Singing in the Rain. That was where they did the Wizard of Oz Munchkin Land. The Yellow Brick Road was in there. They had a trick door on the floor so the uh, witch could come up from the floor. They had a whole listing of all the productions that had been filmed in there. And you can see right at the top of the list, the Wizard of Oz. Also, I was kind of surprised to see like the Charlie Sheen roast. Other things like the Cable Guy. All kinds of movies have been in there. Spider-Man 3, As Good As It Gets, Charlie's Angels. Yeah, lots of stuff in that soundstage, but I couldn't show any photos in there. Then we started walking further into the studio because he told us we were gonna actually get to take photos inside the soundstage of Wheel of Fortune. So here we are outside of Wheel of Fortune studio. And as we were walking in, the whole outside of the studio building is just covered in Wheel of Fortune stuff. Only Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune are like that on the lot that I noticed. All the other um, studio sound stages had nothing on them. And there I am with Pat and Vanna. And that's uh, Vanna White's parking space. So we were allowed to go inside, no video, but I could show you they had a lot of collectibles, a lot of memorabilia in there including a whole case of things, including uh, Emmy Awards, Vanna's dress, some of her jewelry, as you can see right here, that she would have worn on the show. There's one of her dresses from the show. She's been on there a long time, since 1982 or three, I believe. A uh, bath that was gifted to her for breast cancer awareness. A couple of Emmy Awards, which I thought was really cool that they would have those on display. Some pictures, I believe Pat Sajak just announced he's gonna retire. But here we go. Just as we were getting ready to go in, I noticed there's one of the W's off to the side. I thought that was kind of cool because we always see those getting flipped around. And they had some on display you could take photos of. Then they also had Sheldon, the uh, Wheel of Fortune mascot in here. So I took a picture of him as well. I thought, well, hey, why not, you know? Just the anticipation building up to seeing the soundstage. This was for the announcer of Wheel of Fortune. And then we start walking down the hall to enter the soundstage. And there it is. That's where the wheel is. That's where everyone stands. You can see the main board up there. A little further in, you can see where Vanna would turn the letters. 
Really cool experience to get to see this. Not quite sure why we couldn't video it and only photo, but I was happy they let us do this. Quite an experience. This show's been on forever, and I think everybody's seen it, so. Just getting to stand on the sound stage, look around, take it all in was pretty amazing. And they told us they filmed several shows a day, so some people will be a winner for only 40 minutes. Yeah, do not touch <laughs> under any circumstances. And I look back in the back and look what I found. Oh yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Hidden in the back. And then this is where the audience would sit right here. If you ever go and do a free taping, you'll sit right there. And I noticed this on the way out. They used to film at Disneyland every once in a while. And look at how they decorated that. Whoa. <laughs> and a picture of Anna White when she did her audition. So yeah, it was 1982. And then as we walked out, it's right next to the Jeopardy stage, which we were going to next. And I noticed the Jeopardy golf cart. Sadly, uh, Alex Rebecca's no longer around. They explained to us that very little water is kept in the towers just for balance, but they used to use it a lot when they were developing film. And there we saw some of the uh, props and stage um, sets over there. And now we're walking over into Jeopardy. Oh yeah. The classic Jeopardy soundstage. Really amazing to see this. They did name it after Alex. You can kind of still feel him around there. Yeah, see? <laughs> Gotta be very careful. So these were actual contestants from, or contestant sections from 20, 2006, I believe. And so we were allowed to take our photos behind it. They said they change them up every couple of years. Look at all the Emmy Awards on display. I forget how many they said they'd won, but it was like, like 42 or something like that. Just absolutely amazing. And then this is behind the podium. Those Everything was there except for the clicker. And that's uh, showing the ones that we were going to be standing by. And so 2006 to 2009, I got back there and then handed my camera to Keith. And Keith took a photo of me behind there. Thanks, Keith Coogan. And then that describes that we were behind those actual ones. There's some other people getting their photos taken. Really cool photo op. And that's one of the ones that Alex would have stood behind. And when you looked in it, they had a, uh, rep a Lego replica from when they did a Lego of Jeopardy. This is where Alex would stand and he would mark off the questions with a crayon because the Sharpie would make too much noise. There you can see his glasses and all the X's he'd made for questions that had been answered. And of course your pal Jordan the Lion with all the Emmys. I had to. And then this is the music for Jeopardy written by Merv Griffin. We found out Merv Griffin made $160 million just off of the use of this song. Now we're entering the soundstage. Get ready, folks. Da -na -na -na. I know, right? <laughs> How cool. Look at it. There's where the audience sits, the big Jeopardy lighting up in the background when the show starts. All the questions will pop up on there. Alex would stand right there to the right. That's where all your contestants stand. And they taught us something interesting I didn't know about this. They actually had risers behind where the contestants stand because they want everyone to be level. So when they had Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, they had to like lower the thing as low as it would go so they don't have to keep adjusting the camera and it can just go straight across. So this used to be a soundstage with a giant theater for like all their Broadway stuff. And um, they converted it to like offices on the floors. But we got to walk inside and they said that Anne Margaret and Elvis would have recorded their stuff in here. We got to look through there because you could actually see some of the old ropes and stuff in there. And he was showing us here that it had been converted into different floors instead of one big giant soundstage. But those are the original ropes that would have lifted the curtains. Some of the old recording equipment. And some photos of things that would have been recorded in there. Filmed in there before it was converted. Look at that, an old piece of equipment. And I noticed over there it had the MGM logo as an original. Very cool. And then this just had a listing of all the things that had been recorded on there. Day at the Races, I thought that was cool. Idiot's Delight. Yeah, how cool is that? <laughs> Knott's Landing. Oh, yeah, on the uh, stage with Wizard of Oz, 
told us a great story about how, uh, even though it was back on Soundstage 27, about how the Marx Brothers got rained out at Santa Anita when they were trying to film a day at the races, so they turned the st soundstage into a horse track. How cool is that? <laughs> North by Northwest, I thought that was cool. My Girl 2 was filmed in there. Yeah, and then we were going over by Stage 3, 4, and 5. And this was interesting because they were pointing out that this is where Tom and Jerry were originated from. What's now the Spencer Tracy building, all those animations came from there. And then this was the school where Elizabeth Taylor, Judy Garland, Mickey Rooney, all those kids would have went to school. That was actually because of Keith's grandfather Jackie Coogan and we thought it was kind of crazy that the school is named the, the Joan Crawford building considering her history with kids but next then we came over and we saw the Hepburn West and Hepburn East building the building on the left is Hepburn West the lower floor was Cary Grant's office for many years and then when Elvis signed on in 1960 it was his office for two years thought that was really awesome. I was really into that. thought that was cool. They said Elvis was really miserable while he was here being kept on the sound stages. Then we went over by the theaters that were all named after people. And then we went over here and I noticed this building was named after Clark Gable. They didn't, they said it's just offices and everything, but that one was named after him. They actually believe that his, um, his bungalow would have been in Hepburn East. And this was the Myrna Loy building. Now we were continuing to walk down to what I believe took us to, yeah, the Barbara Streisand scoring stage. This was, we took a lot of time in here because this is where they do like Star Wars, Star Trek, all that stuff, all the, the music for that stuff in there. We weren't allowed to film in there, but Streisand's recorded there, Elvis, Michael Jackson, every name in the business, including Judy Garland doing the soundtrack for Wizard of Oz in here. So we actually saw a photo of where Judy Garland was standing when she recorded in there. So cool. Look at all the things that were recorded there. Gone with the Wind, An American in Paris, Dr. Zhivago, Ben-Hur, The Wizard of Oz, Ace Ventura. <laughs> Yeah, lots and lots of scoring. Probably the best soundstage in town. And look, Godzilla, Star Wars, La La Land. So we got to go in there. Then when we were in the control room, some people were sitting on a black couch in there. And Keith pointed out that that was Steven Spielberg's favorite place to nap in town. And that Steven Spielberg always sat on that couch. I didn't take a photo because we weren't allowed to. But in that room, they also had another sound booth that Barbara Streisand requested be built so that she could see the control booth and the uh, producers better. So we got to see that, that was really cool. Look at that beautiful Columbia picture sign up there. We have a little uh, break of shopping in the store. So I'm gonna run over. They showed us where the famous vehicles were, the movie cars and stuff. I wanna come over here and get some shots while nobody else is over here crowding it. So this is awesome though, because right here is the real deal. I can't even count how many museums I've been to that tries to kind of portray theirs as the original. This is the original from the original movie, first two movies. And it's right out in front of Ivan Reitman's production studio that looks like <laughs> the old firehouse. How cool is that? Fortunately, he passed away, but his son is taking over, so very cool. So there's the real deal, Ecto-1. How about that? Yep. Somebody out there saying, you finally found it. By golly, you finally found the right one. <laughs> yeah, Dan Ackroyd was the one that wanted this particular car because it's the only car that could fit all the guys in there. Then here's the Eagle Fang minivan from Cobra Kai. When Johnny starts up Eagle Fang, that I was super surprised to see. Then they have the Goldberg's car, which was like a uh, homage to the Griswolds kinda when they started doing it. The Mercury station wagon. 
Then over here, we have the legit Ricky Bobby Talladega Nights. They actually filmed the whole movie without getting any rights from Wonder Bread for this. But apparently, since they did an exact replica of the race car, the Wonder Bread race car, they were able to get away with it for fair use because it was exactly the same. They said apparently if they would have changed one thing, they could have gotten sued, but since they didn't, they were allowed to use it without paying any fees. So that was Will Farrell's car. And then this one is from 22 Jump Street. You can see Schwarzenegger's face on the side. <laughs> I mean, that looks about as Schwarzenegger as it can get. So that's kind of cool if you're a 22 Jump Street fan. And then over here we have kind of the coup de gras. They have two vehicles from Breaking Bad. They said this one, the, uh, the deal was they could only use this car if they used a color that did not exist, that the car did not come in. And then there is, they had three of these, apparently so they could blow them up at the end, but this is the one that they uh, had the meth lab in and everything. And you can lift up this little panel over here and you can see inside. So there you go, the one and only surviving main Winnebago RV from Breaking Bad. And then this is just some art from a movie that they painted up here. God, that's so cool. <laughs> All the cars are kind of right over here in front of the Frank Capra dedicated building, which is the uh, I think it's like the city hall, the police station in Joan of Arcadia. And of course, this is a, one of the favorites of people coming by is seeing the rainbow because of Wizard of Oz.